Channel one, I have all of my display up here. All of my selections, waveforms, the whole works. Go to any other channel, they disappear. That's what we gotta fix. Well, it's been about a year since I started working with Everlast products and, uh, and starting to use them more and grabbing up a lot more machines and stuff like that. And uh, people have been asking me what I really feel or what my opinion is about the whole replace the board yourself or replace the broken part yourself if they just send it to you. Well, I can understand how that's kind of intimidating and I can understand how that's, uh, that's difficult for some people to deal with and they don't really, really want to do that themselves. They'd rather just send it out. Uh, me personally, I like it. Uh, I actually, the option is really cool because, I mean, I can send the machine out for weeks and you know have it go away and come back or whatever or they can just send me the part and 20 minutes later I got a working welder again. I kind of like that you know but then again I rely on these machines to get us through the classes and all the rest of the stuff so the least amount of downtime for me is way better. And it doesn't take any you know kind of rocket science degree or uh, you know any kind of specialty knowledge or whatever of welding machines to replace one of these things. I mean all you really got to do is just take some screws apart put this back in and uh, you know swap this out and stick it back together. I mean, uh, it was very easy. The same thing I did on my, uh, my 185 DV build. But uh, it, it, a lot of people are like, well, you know, where do you even start, you know? So let's, let's walk you through this. I've never taken this one apart. This is my 210 EXT, PowerTick 210 EXT. Never taken it apart. We're just gonna walk you through it. I'm gonna figure it out just the same as anybody else does, and I'll hopefully uh, give you some tips and stuff like that on it. It's really very simple. But sometimes the most difficult thing is figuring out where all of the screws are and which order they need to come out in order to actually take pieces off. But on the case of the Everlast uh, series, most of the welders, I noticed that all of the uh, main screws were on the back panel and on the sides of the actual case themselves. So first we'll take off the four screws that you can see on the back panel and then we'll flip it on its side and have a look. We have three more that need to come off of the bottom section. Once all the screws are out, I'm going to pull it back up and I'm going to slide the back panel off along with the handle. Now the case has five screws on each side of it, so as soon as we locate all of those, we'll zip them out really quick and we can get the case off of it. Now with all of the screws off, it's just a simple sliding back of the case and pulling it off of the top of the machine. Once you have your case cover off of there, you take a look at this and you say, oh geez, that's a whole lot of friggin' wires and circuit boards and green stuff and oh, where do I even start? Well, here's the simplest thing. Take your board, hold it up there, and find which one that matches. It's really that easy. Well, it looks like our board is right there on top. This is the board that we have to replace, which is right here. Now, if it was somewhere else within the machine, you'd obviously be able to match it up pretty easy because most of this machine, you can look inside of there and say, yeah, this piece is that piece, that piece, that piece, and you can see them all pretty well. Now if you had to take more of this stuff apart, you know, you can see where the screws are, you can find out where they all line up. The face does not need to come off of this to do this repair, but if it did, the screws on the inside, there's some screws that hold on the, uh, the face of the panel that are on there. There's a couple down here on the bottom that actually hold uh, the lugs and the dense connectors to the actual panel itself, as well as on the bottom of the machine, just like there were on the back panel. All you got to do is find the screws. Now here's a careful tip. If you ever see uh, panel or something that doesn't want to come undone and you think you have all the screws out and there's one part that's snagging on it Find that screw. It's probably in there somewhere. So we got to replace this board up top again super simple to do Here's how to get it done now rather than trying to memorize where everything is at Just grab a hold of your phone and take very detailed and accurate pictures of the board that you have to replace That way you'll know exactly where every connector goes now each one of these connectors, they can be a little bit tricky to get out of there and you want to be as careful as possible, so very lightly pry up on them, just kind of lift and they should just snap right out of there. Now if we look carefully here, we have two connectors that come from the same harness that look identical. So we can't get these mixed up because they have the same pin count and everything else like that. So I'm going to take a red marker and I'm going to mark just one of these connectors to make sure that it actually has it on both sides, on the male and female port. And then I'm going to go to the new board and mark the exact same port on there so that way we will not get these two mixed up. 
While I don't know what the function of each one of those are, it doesn't matter, I want to make sure that they go back in the same spot the way they did before. Now the ribbon cables, there's usually a tab on each side, you just press down on the tabs and it pops it right out. Now sometimes you can't always see how the board is mounted when it's actually mounted to the chassis, so it's a good idea to look at the new board and find your mounting locations. In this case we have four screw holes that we can clearly see here that will basically hold the board down to the actual chassis of the machine. So in the event that you can't find out where they all are or anything like that or they're buried or you just couldn't see them, just look at the new board and then it'll show you exactly where uh, you're connected and what you need actually need to do. As soon as you have it loose, make sure you lift up slowly, just in case there's something else attached. In this case, you can see the earth lead. I still had it attached. I didn't see it. Even though it was on the new board, I missed it. So always lift up the board very slowly, just in case something is attached or snagged or anything else like that. Now to reassemble, it's the exact opposite of what you did for disassembly. So first, I'm going to attach the earth lead. We'll get that stuck back in there where it needs to be. Then we're going to weasel the board back in. Now this is something you need to pay attention to is to make sure that all of the connectors and the pigtails and everything like that are out from underneath the board. Thing is they can get jammed up or whatever underneath there and if you secure the board back down to the chassis you realize you got to take it back apart again and all the rest of that good stuff. It's kind of annoying so make sure that they're all out of the way, nothing's pinched, nothing's snagged, you know, just make sure it's nice, clean, neat and even. Now reassembly just throw them all back in there. Now the thing is, I'm, I'm going off of memory here, and if I have a problem, I'm going to consult my phone. But I made sure that, the, of course, the yellow wires that we pulled off before that we had to mark out there, they're lined up right back where they need to be. And generally speaking, it was smooth sailing. But remember one thing, these sockets only go in one way. So if it's not wanting to work, it's not going, don't force it. Make sure it's lined up, then press it in. Now here's an instance where I couldn't remember which one was where. I got a pair of two pins and they're right next to each other. So I don't know which one was on the left, which one was on the right. So I'm going to pull my phone out and it's going to show it right there. The red was on the left, the yellow was on the right. So if you're not sure, go back and look at your phone and check out the picture because that's what it's there for. Now I'm also going to go back over and make sure that I have every single one in place and make sure that every single one is actually there. Then I realized that I was missing one, but I don't see it on the harness anywhere. So I was a little confused, but thanks to the picture I can trace it back here and I found out this one actually wrapped around the side and snagged underneath another board, which made it look kind of OEM. But as soon as I found it, pulled it right back out, make sure it gets lined up, stick it right back in the spot, and then our board swap is complete. All right, plug that in real quick. Be very careful not to touch anything. You don't know what's gonna shock you or anything like that. We'll flip this thing on here. Let's take a look. Go through its warm up. Looks like we got everything we need. Not too difficult. So again, it really doesn't take any kind of rocket science or serious experience or anything like that to do a board change out on a machine like this. It's actually very, very simple. Now, of course, the uh, putting it all back together is exactly the opposite of which way you took it off there. So hope that's helpful. And, uh, you know, this will uh, get you guys going in the right direction. If you see it a different way, then, you know, send your machine in or do whatever it is you got to do. So I find it a little bit easier. But either way. That's going to wrap it up for this one. I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel for more really awesome content. And if you need to get in touch with us, you can hit us up on the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator, or Facebook.com slash thefabricatorseries. I'll see you guys on the next episode.